Good morning. We will be uh, returning to Divine Service Setting 3 this morning, so after our opening hymn, be ready to turn to page 184 for our Divine Service Liturgy. Our opening hymn is hymn 601, 60. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord. For to you do I cry all the day. 
gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maid servant. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning now and will be forever. Amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. continual pity cleanse and defend your church and because she cannot continue in safety without your aid preserve her evermore by your help and goodness through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever
The Old Testament reading for the 15th Sunday after Trinity is from 1 Kings chapter 17. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterward make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The epistle is from Galatians chapters 5 and 6. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the Alleluia and the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, 
what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us together confess the Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn of the day, hymn 760, 760.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, our gospel text from Matthew chapter 6 is one of the many homilies or sermons that Jesus gave while he was on the mount near Galilee. And together these homilies or little sermons uh, are called collectively the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus taught the disciples and the crowd about the Christian life when he gave these series of sermons and the good works that they should be doing and the doctrines that they should treasure in their hearts. In short, he taught them about the life of true holiness and what devotion to God looks like. And you should be familiar with this greatest of sermons, the Sermon on the Mount. It starts in Matthew chapter 5 and it goes through to the end of chapter 7. The other gospel writers refer to it as well. But in our little sermon, our homily for today in our text in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus warned against greed and the love of money, and he followed this up by imploring the Christian, and he implores us today, to not worry about the things of this life and how we're going to live and how we're going to pay the bills, etc., but how we ought to trust God. In God for all things. Listen carefully. Let's go through our text today. Let's learn how to put money and the possessions that God has given us in their proper place. Let's learn from our text today to not fear or worry about the future, but to trust in God that He will give all things necessary in this life for us to live. So Jesus began His little sermon no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve God and money our translation uses the word here to serve but the Greek word behind that really means to serve as a slave who is owned by a master Everyone back then knew that slaves were bound by law to obey their master for good and oftentimes for ill. Now, in our American culture, this whole concept of serving as a slave is really rather foreign to us. We have a great aversion to serving in obedience to someone who has power over us and who can tell us what to do and what not to do. We're very proud people, aren't we? We're not unlike the Jews of Jesus' day, and we hate and loathe the concept of serving anybody, and we will boast that we are our own master, and nobody is going to tell us what to do. I quit, right? We know what that is like. But this boasting of I'm not going to have anybody tell me what to do is nonsense. The Bible's clear. You are going to be a slave to either the one true God or you are going to be a slave to the devil. There's no in between. And this should make sense to the rest of humanity. Even pagans understand the adage, everybody serves somebody. Well, the Bible teaches us that Either you're a slave to the one true God or a slave to the evil one, the devil. And in the context of our text today, serving the devil and serving money are two sides of the same coin. You cannot, friends, be greedy and serve and be anxious to money and still be saved. Because when you're greedy and you serve the great God, money, you are actually serving the devil. And in fact, Apostle, the Apostle Paul lumps the greedy together with idolaters, adulterers, and the like, and says plainly, they're not going to heaven. Watch out. Make sure you're serving the one true God. Make sure that you don't have greed festering in your hearts. Whom you serve has great implications for this life and the next. That said, friends, it is obvious to see the power and influence that Satan has in this world because one of his greatest tools, Luther, when he preached on this text, said it's the greatest way that the, that the devil 
leads people away from the Christ is through greed. And it's evident, isn't it, throughout the world. People who learn to trust in riches for health and happiness. And in fact, it doesn't even seem to be learned. It seems to be innate in all of us. Greed. Everybody seems to be greedy and anxious about money and possessions. And if they don't seem to be anxious, wait and watch what happens when someone takes advantage of them and steals or takes their money and possessions. Then you can see greed flowering like a plant. People will fume and foam at the mouth when they are taken advantage of. Do not think for a moment, friends, that you are innocent of the terrible, devilish sin of greed. You are guilty. And so am I. Repent of greed. Learn to be generous to God with what you have and trust in him to give you what you need in this life making sure that you are going about doing zealously what your duties call on you to do. The devil is always lurking around, ready to pounce and insert greed in your hearts at any time, and you must resist it if you wish to remain a Christian and go to heaven. You cannot serve God and money. We like to scoff at the Israelites, don't we? When they were delivered out of Egypt, when they went through the Red Sea and saw their enemies destroyed, when God brought the waters back over them, then within days of their great deliverance, Moses went up on the mountain. And what did those silly, crass Israelites do? They made a golden calf and they worshipped it. Oh, those backwards people. We think that we are so much more enlightened than these uncivilized peoples who bow down to a statue and worship. But really, we're not that different. It's just that greed and idolatry is so often hidden in the heart. And we can worship money and the bank statement and our 401k and the house and the children and whatever it is that can give us wealth and we can hide it pretty well. But we can't hide it from God. Oh, Father in heaven, save us from the love of money. Save us from the crass idolatry to the almighty dollar. Forgive us our sins of greed and anxious worry about money. Friends, if you have made a life for yourself centered around making money and growing it and then enjoying it, change your attitude. Learn to trust in God for all good things. And be generous with what you have. After all, friends, God actually forgives us our sins of greed and anxious desire for money on account of Christ, who was perfectly content. Not a greedy thought crossed his mind. He perfectly trusted in God, the Father Almighty, to provide him with what he needed to live a fine life. And our salvation from greed is in this Christ who is perfectly content and whose righteousness is ours when we believe in him. And so our first lesson in our text is this. Money really is the great God of the world. It's the greatest false God there is. And people everywhere worship it. And so lead themselves into a guilty conscience. But Jesus calls on us to repent of such idolatry, of such greed, of such trust and anxious worry about money and urges us to 
serve and worship the one true God who alone can bring us peace and contentment. Now, Jesus says plainly, you cannot serve God and money, but he doesn't spell out exactly how you serve God. This is important to figure out. How do you serve God or how, to put it into Jesus' words later in the gospel, how do you seek first the kingdom of God? What are the practical things you can do to ward off greed and the love of money? Well, serving God and seeking his kingdom is, after all, what separates us from the world and all unbelievers who feverishly seek after wealth, health, and good times. And we might have the same jobs, we might have the same looking house, we might have the same looking families as the pagan, but our motivation in life is different completely. It's simple, really. The true Christian serves God and seeks his kingdom by doing what God has commanded and by not doing what he has forbidden. And this is spelled out nicely in the Ten Commandments, isn't it? In the Catechism and with those wonderful explanations, we learn that God wants us to fear, love, and trust in him above all things. And we learn that we are not to harm our neighbor but do good to him. And we learned... An example of this with the parable of the Good Samaritan from a few weeks ago. But ultimately, friends, ultimately, and this has to be grasped. Ultimately, and above all things, serving God means to listen to the faithful preacher and accept and believe the good news of Jesus Christ that he preaches. Jesus died for your sins. Do you believe it? Wonderful. So you can serve God today. You can begin serving God today by accepting the gospel for yourself. Believing that you are a poor, miserable sinner as we just confessed, but that God in his love for you forgives you your sins on account of Christ and because of Christ who died for you. Let's learn then to put money and possessions in their place. First, considering our spiritual needs, confessing our sins, believing in Christ and the gospel, and learn to put our money and possessions in their place and consider them as tools, tools that God has given you to put food on the table for your family, and then tools to put to use that you might bless others, especially, especially, friends, your brothers and sisters in Christ right here. This is what our epistle text taught us. Do good to all people, but especially to the saints, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Friends, invest your worldly wealth in that which brings spiritual riches to others. Look at the offering plate as this great opportunity that you have to be generous back to God, to put your money and possessions in their place, as Jesus commends us to do, and so be a benefit to others because that supports gospel preaching. That supports instruction in God's word. That supports the called and ordained pastor putting the body and blood of Christ in the mouths of the saints that they might be encouraged that God loves them and forgives them. Now, the rest of our text today from Matthew chapter 6 is... Jesus' kind and gentle words in which he draws attentions to birds and plants that we might be compelled to not worry. Allow me to read it again here. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? 
And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? And here, friends, we are urged to consider God's work as creator of, of all things. Who continues to provide for his creation and sustain it. And here Jesus is urging us to meditate on the first article of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And don't have the idea that when you confess this article of the creed that God so made the world and then stepped back. God is very active as creator right at this moment. And if his hand, his almighty hand of creation were to be pulled back, we'd all be dead in an instant. The sun would cease to shine. God continues to create. He even uses us to create as we have families and grow things in the ground and so on. Let's have a mind that understands the provision of God as creator. He provides the smallest of birds food to live on, places to build their nests, protection from predators so that the Eggs can grow into a new generation of birds. He provides for plants to grow. He gives water that they have moisture. He gives them sun so that they can grow and be sturdy and produce crops and pretty flowers and so on. And he's calling on us here then to reject evolution for the other nonsense that it is. And consider his work as creator and sustainer of the world. Learn, friends, to be comforted by the fact that if God takes care of his creation, birds, flowers, plants, how much more he will, will he take care of you? After all, birds and plants aren't made in the image of God, but you are. God is supremely pleased with his son and says as much, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And you who are covered with Christ's righteousness because you believe and are baptized, how much will God care for you to this brother of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ? He will take care of you. We have the greatest motivation, friends, to not worship money because we have the creator of the world, the whole universe on our side, looking out for us, making sure that we have what we need to live on. The woman who put in the two small copper coins. Oh, we like to talk about her, especially when it's time to help motivate people to give to the offering plate. But And that's proper and fine. But notice in that text that she gave all that she had to live on, trusting that God would provide for her. Let's have the faith of that woman. Being generous with what we have, entrusting it to God that we might bless others with the preached word and trust that God will provide. It's helpful, too, to consider how kind and gracious God is to all of us, even to the unbeliever. And the tragedy, then, of seeing the unbeliever not giving thanks to God. This is taught in... Scripture, when our Lord says he makes his sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. It's said then, knowing how the great mass of unbelievers that comprise this world, how they refuse to acknowledge God and give thanks to him when he does provide them that which they so anxiously toil for. A roof over their heads and food on the table. But God doesn't want us to be like them. 
He wants us to give thanks for his provision of daily bread. And when it seems to get short, when it seems to be not very much and we're just not sure if there's going to be food the next day, like the widow of Zarephath that we read in our Old Testament, God wants us to trust, like the widow was commended to do to Elijah, trust that it's going to be okay. It will be okay. God will give you your own jar of oil and tub of flour. So our gospel text today, God is urging us to consider how the world works and strives and toils to provide for themselves. And he says, don't do it like that. The Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Get spiritual riches, which are provided here for you through the preached word and sacrament. Don't worry about earthly riches. God will see to it that you have enough. Oh, friends, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the matters of this life and what it takes to live on this planet, God will take care of that. As Luther said, let God worry about your daily bread and how you're going to get it. Amen. The peace of God that transcends all understanding. Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the offertory. <laughs> Please rise for the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, grant us the peace that comes from above and faith to trust in you for all things needful for this body and life that we might have joy in your grace now and in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, O oh God, you have set your reign and your righteousness before us in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Help us always to look to him who has saved us from our sins, constantly seeking him and his riches above all things. Lord, in your mercy. Divine Master, your son warns that we cannot truly serve you and pursue security and worldly wealth. Grant us firm faith in your provision and the peace that this world cannot give. Lord, in your mercy. Bless our nation and give us leaders who govern wisely and who properly punish the wicked and protect the innocent, including the unborn. Protect all in our armed forces and grant that they may serve honorably. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you have called us to bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. Comfort and console the sick and suffering as well as those who long to be with us but cannot. Grant to all who have need according to your good pleasure, especially Diane said, Jim Wangaman and Art Patterson for health and healing. Our Savior's Lutheran Church for comfort and grace during their upcoming vacancy and success in calling a faithful pastor. Peace Lutheran Church in Fresno for faithful ears to hear your word. Our homebound Anna Marie, Nelavon, and Harold for hope and joy in the Lord. Our missionaries Matt and Kelly Wood, Walt and Robin Steele, Michael and Irene Paul for all they need to continue serving you overseas. And our seminarian Nathan Kieser for all he needs to successfully finish seminary. Lord, in your mercy. Increase our faith, O Lord, and grant that all who come to your supper may come in repentance, seeking your forgiveness, and in the unity of a true confession. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come to the service of the sacrament. We do practice closed communion here at Our Savior's Lutheran. What does this mean? It means that normally I can commune only those who are currently members in good standing of this congregation or another congregation that is Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you're visiting today and have not spoken with me about communion, please remain in the pew at this time. Join us in prayer and praise, and I look forward to speaking with you about joining our confession. Members, who are coming forward, please come in the sincere repentance of your sins, longing to be refreshed with the Holy Spirit and the forgiveness of sins, which is offered here for you in the body and blood of our Lord. We continue on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
seated for our closing hymn, 737 verses 1 and 7. Very nice to see all of you here. Nice to see the Burfinds visiting us again. Uh, nice to have our other guests with us. Please, before you go, greet somebody and uh, greet them in the Lord with the joy, knowing that your sins are forgiven on account of Christ. Uh, there is elders meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. You'll see here in the announcements to the Hoff family send-off. I sure hope that you can be here for my last Sunday on September 22nd. That would mean a lot to me and my f uh, wife and family uh, for that send-off. Um, any other details about when we're actually leaving? Uh, they're kind of up in the air. If you ask, we'll try to give you a, an answer, but it's a kind of a little up in the air for us too with the house purchase and things like that. So, uh, Any other announcements? Have a blessed day in the Lord.